There's no doubting that natural disasters can be, well, disastrous. Fire, flood, hurricanes, volcanoes and earthquakes can devastate human and animal ecosystems alike, leaving the earth scorched, scarred and barren. But is this always the case? Can catastrophic natural events actually do nature a favour? Well, as it turns out, many species of animals and plants can do much more than just survive in the face of disaster, but can actually thrive in the apparent devastation they leave behind. Take volcanoes, for instance. Volcanic eruptions on land produce deadly lava flows that cover everything in their path, while the surrounding area is flattened and scorched by unstoppable pyroclastic flows. Explosive eruptions eject ash into the atmosphere, which settles and threatens to smother anything that can't get out of the way. It's true that anything that can't get out of the way of an erupting volcano is likely to meet a quick, hot end. But after the ash has settled and the lava flows cool, the environment that's left behind is ripe for colonising life. That's because volcanic material like lava and ash, derived from deep within the Earth's crust, is rich with minerals that contain iron, calcium, sodium and potassium. Once these minerals start to break down, they create an incredibly fertile soil that has everything that plants crave. Pioneering plants like lichens and mosses move in to make the most of these minerals, and these are soon followed by other insect-pollinated plants and animals. Before long, a new habitat is created, feeding off the minerals that came from deep beneath the surface. In Hawaii, where lava flows are continually reshaping the islands, the rainy sides of the volcanic slopes can be colonised by ferns and small trees within just two years. And older volcanic territories like the slopes of Vesuvius in Italy are some of the most fertile agricultural land in the world, having supported farming for thousands of years. But if fertile land wasn't enough, how about new land entirely? Volcanoes erupting underwater will eventually create new islands that are just waiting for new inhabitants. Once they get there, by floating, swimming, flying or hitching a ride, animals and plants could find a utopia rich in mineral resources without any competition or danger, allowing them to thrive and create unique ecosystems like those on the famed Galapagos Islands. But also in Micronesia, the Ryukyu Islands, the Aleutian Islands, the Bismarck Archipelago, the Aegean Arc and the Antilles. All biodiversity havens and all thanks to volcanoes. But what about when you get all the destruction without the land construction? Wildfires are possibly one of the most common disasters affecting forested areas worldwide. After months of dry conditions, a single ember can spark a raging fire that can rip through vegetation, killing and severely injuring all wildlife and humans in its path. Fires frequently ravage areas of forest in southern Europe, Canada and the United States, as well as the Australian bush, leaving behind a charred, blackened landscape. But it's not all disaster for the life in these fire-prone regions. Some trees, like the giant sequoia, have thick fire-retardant bark that protects them from all but the fiercest fires. Others, like the South African aloes, hang on to dead leaves around their stem as an extra layer of heat insulation. This means that once the fire has passed through and destroyed the weaker, unprotected plants, the fire-retardant ones can awake to a clean slate without the pressures of competition or consumption from animals, at least for a while. It's an effective, if brutal, reset button to banish invasive species and reduce overpopulation. But some plants go further than that, not just weathering out a fire storm, but actively embracing it, making it a necessary part of their life cycles. The eucalyptus tree and Australian banksia both have seed pods that are completely sealed by resin. The only way that the seeds can be released and dispersed is by the fire's heat physically melting the resin. Plus, the seeds of acacia plants that lie dormant in the soil are triggered to start sprouting by extreme heat and chemicals from smoke and ash. These plants simply 
can't reproduce without the devastating fires that sweep across their habitats, since the fire itself makes it more likely that the new plants will succeed. The silver lining to natural disasters doesn't end there either. Floods not only create fertile plains that can support lush agriculture, but they can also offer temporary safe spawning grounds for fish and help to move fish to lakes and rivers that would normally be separated by land, revitalizing the biodiversity there. And even hurricanes play an important part as their strong winds and stormy conditions help to distribute heat across the Earth's surface, stopping it from becoming inhospitably hot in the tropics. Unbelievably, even the most catastrophic of events that have caused the mass extinctions in Earth's history could turn out to be good for some. The meteorite impact that wiped out the dinosaurs, for instance, eventually led to the death of three quarters of life on Earth. But for the quarter that remained, the world was full of empty land and new opportunities. Those opportunities allowed an explosion of new species, beginning an age of brand new mammals and birds, and eventually us. Without that meteorite, there's a very good chance we wouldn't be here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to BBC Earth Unplugged for more big nature questions.